Good evening, everyone. This is a uh, regular scheduled meeting of the uh, uh, select board of the town of Sunderland. Uh, please call the morning call, call to uh, order at 6:40 p.m. on May 17, 2021. Our first over thing. Our first up. Um, Laura, are you still there? You want to give us a quick update on COVID? I'm still here and sure. Um, it's a great update uh, from the data I have for the previous two weeks. Um, we should be at one. And I really oh, like that. That's a nice number. It is a nice number. It's a the lonely, last... it's a lonely yeah. number. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a just fine lonely number. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last time I had a new case reported was May 5th. Um, so that's very good for the town. Very, very good. Um, I was just looking through some of the statistics on who's been vaccinated and how many. And in Sunderland, we have, um, they broke it out by sex. I don't know why, but we have 850 females and 693 males fully vaccinated in Sunderland. And that's a good thing. So did they give a percentage at all of even within that category or? They do no. not, no. Okay. Um, and individuals with at least one dose, um, female is 1,195 and males are 1,099. So we're making good strides. Good numbers. We can do better, Sunderland. Come on, folks. We can, we can do better. <laughs> Don't be afraid. No, get out there and get her done, you know? Get done, yeah. Even the um, worst side effects are far better than anything that you'd get with, with the actual virus. So, you know. Yes, I can tell you both. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, and I don't know how Treehouse went for the vaccine clinic on Sunday. Uh, it went uh, it went very well. I uh, First, I'd like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to uh members of our community that continue to show up and volunteer to, uh, to work the clinics. Um, if you go to anything that's run um, in the county that's run by the towns or the um, health groups, um, all the people there, the, the nurses doing the vaccination, the, the vaccine runners, the, the people helping park cars, the scribes, the people setting up second appointments, all of those people are, are volunteers. And it really does take a lot, of, a lot of volunteers to make it work. But I will say that the, uh, we have had tremendous um, support by the people in our community. And, and um, when, when, when you look up and, and you see a lot of familiar faces, you know, escorting people and talking to people and working behind counters. It's, it's a, it's a really great, it's a great feeling. Um, we, it was, we had um, a number of people registered. We went, we, I, I was surprised that the, there was a, a huge spectrum of, we, we, we had the Johnson and Johnson. Um, so that we couldn't, you know, you couldn't do any children but Jeff's going to talk about that in a little bit um, over what's happening with Frontier. Um, but uh, there was a wide, we had older people, we had younger people, we had in people in between. We had um, people I noticed that were, that were not very happy about getting shots. That, that seemed to be the biggest thing, Lori. They, they were, <laughs> they were, they were very hesitant to get the shots, but uh, um, I, they, again, it was, a, it was, it was great seeing all the, the people come out and it was very organized. People didn't have to wait long. It was good. We had, it was a good, it was a good clinic. Very good clinic. Excellent. That's good to hear. Very good um, I don't know if we want to talk about more about, um, Governor Baker's new orders for starting May 29th. Are we gonna follow along with his orders and drop the face mask requirement in Sunderland? Um, 
Um, I, I think we'll wait, let Caitlin and the Board of Health weigh in on that. Yep. Um, see what they see what they have to say. Um, I, you know, we'll see what they have. To, I, I, I personally, I, I appreciate the way the, um, you know, Pete, some, some find fault with the way the CDC is doing things, but I think um, I appreciate the fact that they're, they're continually researching, they're continually updating, and they're continuing getting new information out. When, if they have information based on fact, they get that information out. I think that we're, we're uh, that's what we want, that we want trans, that's what they've always said to me, you want transparency. Uh, and they're giving it to you. And some, sometimes some of the stuff they're saying may contradict what they said earlier, but they're always looking at new things. They're, they're looking at new science, new data. And, and I think that's all we can expect of them. So I'm, I'm, and, and not only that, but I was, I was extremely surprised that our governor um, has, has opened you know, opened his 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 eyes also, and the people around him, and and uh, he's making a change as well. So, I, I think that's good. It's good stuff. I think. Um, that's so. my update for tonight. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Okay. Appreciate it. Someday you'll be able to go back to your Monday evenings by yourself. So, <laughs> not, or not having to come on Zoom, I should say. All right. Um. So first, we'll go to new business. Uh, what we can drop back later to Jeff has some other. Yeah, Jeff. I can talk about it in my updates. It's fine. Yeah, I was, I was going to say you can talk about in your updates what what you have there. Um, so let let's uh, without ado, let's talk about mosquitoes. What do we got about mosquitoes tonight, Jeff? So we have Christopher Craig from the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District on the phone, and. Chris, uh, did you want me to pull up the presentation that you sent, or do you want to just talk about the Mosquito Control District? Uh, I was just going to talk about it, but uh, okay. if you would like to, if that helps as a visual aid, feel free. Sorry, I would have I would have uh, logged in on my computer, but you know I always have a technical difficulties with Zoom. I just tend to have uh, more luck with the phone. Yeah, I mean, I, if you're not going to be able to see what's on the screen, I don't know if it'll be helpful um, yeah, yeah i could just uh i could just convey it vocally so um well. i guess this is a continuation of our our conversation from a couple weeks ago or from last week about uh the state's program um for spraying if if the department of public health determines that there's a uh our borovirus uh, hazard in the region and what our response should be. So I reached out to Chris about, um, you know, the process for joining the Pioneer Valley Mos um, Mosquito Control District and um, what kind of services they would be able to offer and what type of work they do. And um, since I probably wouldn't be able to answer any questions that the Board of the Public had, I thought it would be better for Chris to speak about it um himself sure. so so yeah just uh i could give a quick summary uh so thanks for inviting me here um just a little bit about the district we uh we officially uh, formed <clears throat> in 2017 so since then we've been uh, slowly but surely we've been growing our capacity to uh, uh invite more members and uh, include new services um, since the Triple E outbreak in 2019, we've really been trying to expedite the process and really uh, kind of get the ball rolling, which we fortunately have been able to do with our surveillance program. Uh, so that, that's the service we currently offer to our members is the surveillance program. And what that entails is each, uh, each town that's in the district gets uh, two traps per week from June to October. And uh, those two traps get set in habitat that is suitable for mosquito breeding. And uh, we set two traps, one of which is very effective at catching mosquitoes that tend to carry triple E. And then we have another trap that tends to catch mosquitoes that are uh, carrying West Nile virus. So we kind of get both diseases. Um, we set those traps. What happens is you set them in those habitats overnight and I collect them the next day. And uh, I submit them to Department of Public Health where they, uh, they test the mosquitoes for either disease. So... That happens every week from uh, when Department of Public Health makes the call. It's, it's a little weather, uh, weather dependent. So 
typically goes from early June to mid October. And uh, that's, that's our current program now, you know, uh, we're, we're brand new. So we're trying to build up capacity so we can start offering more services, but on top of the surveillance, you know, we're, we're always there as a resource for mosquito, uh, just guidance and education. Um, the cost of the program is $5,000 per fiscal year. And uh, that covers all the surveillance costs. And uh, you get a report at the end of the year of everything we found, as well as, of course, if we catch any West Nile, Tripoli, your Board of Health gets uh, contacted right away. So that's what we do right now. And in the future, we're hoping 2022, 2023, we're going to start offering more services. Um, an important note is all the other services are going to be optional. So we kind of recognize that um, we, we want to be ecologically sensitive and we want to respect what towns want in mosquito control. So we, uh, we offer services a la carte, which is the best way to describe it. So towns are kind of able to pick and choose which services they'll want to use. So no town is required to spray or use larvicide or any of that. So you can basically just stick with surveillance or you can opt to choose Another mosquito control service that you think is suitable for your town. Just uh, give you like a quick rundown of some of those. The larva side is larval control. It's using pesticide to control larva. And then there's, you know, the adult spraying. And there's also uh, water management, which involves, uh, you know, cleaning up culverts, uh, wetlands, and uh, kind of preventing uh, stagnant pools of water from draining in your town, or rather allow pools to drain. So it doesn't uh, build up to allow mosquitoes to breed in those sort of uh, containers and conditions. So those are those are some services we're going to be uh, adding in the coming years, and those are all going to be optional. So that's uh, pretty much the rundown. And uh, I'm happy to take any questions or if there's anything else you'd like to know. So, so Chris, right now, what, what are the what are the uh... What are the uh, diseases that are carried by the mosquitoes and how prevalent are they in our area? Uh, the main ones that are focused on by Department of Public Health are Tripoli and West Nile virus. Uh, West Nile virus is tends to be more common. It pops up pretty much at least a little bit every year. Um, there's some years where it's really prevalent, but the uh, it, it tends to be not so serious as Tripoli, but it still has the potential to be uh, to cause serious infections, but Tripoli is the one that we really uh, take very seriously because the the disease is very uh, it's rare, but it is uh, very dangerous. It's uh, Tripoli infections can be it's pretty much a 50 50 shot of living, and uh, it's pretty much guaranteed brain damage if you catch Tripoli. Um, so it's it's a very brutal disease. So that's that's the one we really look out for, but we're always looking out for West Nile virus too. So those are the two big ones, but there are other diseases that could potentially be looked out for in the future. That's kind of uh, something we keep an eye on with climate change as we monitor for any diseases that might be spreading, as well as invasive species that might be more apt to spread different diseases in Massachusetts. So, so, so let's say let's say that there. Right now, the big big question about aerial spraying. Now. Mm -hmm. What, what's the thoughts of the uh, of the mosquito group? What, what's what's their thoughts on aerial spraying? Uh, so, do you mean the the people that would be making the call to do an aerial spray? Yeah. Yeah. So, what they look at is they take the guidance from Department of Public Health. If Department of Public Health determines that the risk of triple E transmission is great enough, they're going to recommend an aerial spray to control adult mosquitoes. They make that it's a little speculative of me, but I would be pretty confident in saying they, they would make that case if they're finding a ton of mosquitoes carrying it, or if someone gets sick with it and they're continuing to find mosquitoes carrying it. So they make that decision. If, if it looks like the risk is high enough, they, uh, they did it in 2019. Typically when an aerial spray happens, it happens in the Southeastern portion of the state. Um, because most of Tripoli comes from that area of the state. Cause there's a large, uh, large mosquito habitats there with the Hockamock Swamp and beyond. But uh, 2019 was the first time an aerial spray kind of came into Central Mass and even a little bit into uh, the Pioneer Valley. So that's kind of where it set the precedent there. And the precedent they took was 
it was 2019 was the worst triple E outbreak on record. So that's what it took to get them to spray out here. So they're looking at basically the risk. If there, if there's a risk of fatalities from triple E, they're going to consider doing the aerial spray. So, so, so I, I guess the point I'm trying to make there is they, they wouldn't do it preemptively. They only really do it if they see it's bad and it's getting worse. Yeah. And, 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 and so, what what's the biggest advantage for the town of Sunderland joining the uh, the mosquito control district? I would say it, it provides the board of health with kind of an early warning. Um, that's where we kind of differ from the other districts because we don't provide an all or nothing package, and we do that because we kind of recognize that many towns, you know, they don't want spraying, and you know, we kind of we respect the fact that that's the town's right to not be sprayed, and. I think the biggest advantage is we can show you what's going on and we can uh, show your local board of health uh, what's happening and we can offer guidance and make recommendations. But ultimately, the local board of health will be able to provide people in your community uh, information on what's going on in the mosquito environment around them and help protect themselves from Tripoli or West Nile virus. Then on top of that, the local board of health, you know, would be able to make our recommendations or decisions on how they would like to control the mosquitoes. And, you know, that could be anywhere from just, you know, people take personal protective measures, or you could contract a private spray if that's a decision you'd want to make. So in the future, we're going to have the option where you could use us, but I mean, that isn't what exists currently, but will be the case within a couple of years. So, I, I mean, so, so, Right now, let's say you, you go out and, and, and how often do you do the, uh, the, uh, the surveillance? How often do you put out the traps? Is it once a week, once a month, twice a week? How, it's once a week. So I would, a... I would be in your town setting two traps every week. Okay. David, Chris, do you have any questions? Uh, I think, well, just... From a monetary standpoint, if you had to spray, for instance, and what, roughly what's that cost? Because that's going to be above the 5,000, obviously. Do you have any like estimates right. on what that might be just from past experience? From So we haven't sprayed yet. As a, Since we're new, we're building capacity. We actually haven't offered the service yet. So it's, it's hard to say ex exactly how much it would cost, but the cost would be dependent on the scale of the job. So... It could range from just a couple thousand dollars if it's one night of spraying uh, disease prone areas. It would be pretty affordable, but I'd say it would range from whether your town just wanted that single spray to if you want regular spraying, that would be obviously more expensive. But I can't imagine it would be more than a couple thousand dollars if, say, you found Tripoli and Sunderland in the area they found it in, you wanted to have sprayed. It would probably cost a couple thousand, but it's hard to say exactly right now because we haven't crunched the numbers on uh, how we do it because we haven't done it yet. But uh, it would be it would cost it would basically be the cost would be based off of uh, the direct labor costs, which would be the the labor, the person spraying, uh, the pesticide, and then just the the fuel and uh, you know the administrative costs. So I can't imagine a, a single night of spraying to kind of uh, combat Tripoli would be more than like a couple thousand dollars at most. So Chris, one, one of the, one of the things that I, that interests me about the, uh, the mosquito district is that of the mm -hmm. surveillance, you, you're kind of actually going out and mapping, you're, you're mapping the habitat in Sunderland, right? So right. if you do right. have a, if you, if you do have a problem, then you can target, you can target those specific areas. Right. Yeah. And that's, and that's where it kind of differs from aerial spray because that's like the nuclear solution, whereas we're kind of like the guided uh, targeted solution. So that's kind of our, our goal is to follow the science and say, look, this is, this is a habitat that is suitable for the triple E carrying mosquito. Triple E has been found. So we know what we have to target if we were to target it. So that's, uh, that's kind of how we do it. You know, we, we kind of look at, uh, Department of Public Health, like uh, they, they keep records of potential mosquito habitat. We look at that, we go through, and uh, I, I actually ground, I, I do basically on the ground uh, surveillance of potential trap sites, and I pick out 
what looks most suitable. And then I use those. So it is a, a targeted approach rather than uh, trying to whack them all kind of do things. Do you change the locations or do you kind of work with a fixed? In other words, say you, you look at Sunderland and you say, all right, you've got like, you know, 10 potential spots. Do, do you right. rotate that at all or do you pick two and then stick yeah. with it? I definitely try to rotate um, at least for one of the sites per week. Unless If I'm getting a site that's getting like really big catches, I'll tend to keep that on the, uh, on the schedule. But I definitely do try to rotate it geographically just so we're getting coverage from around the town. But it, it kind of depends on the town and how much wetlands are in the town. So in Sunderland, I mean, you know, you have forested area and you have a lot of farmland. So I, mean, I would have to take a look at the GIS and see where the wetlands are and then go take a look at them myself. But I, I definitely try to give it a, a geographic uh, kind of cycle. Uh, cycling just so you know everybody in the town is kind of getting the benefit from it everybody's getting watched out for yeah actually you kind of touched on something i was thinking about do you like with the gis do you end up doing like sort, sort of um like data heat map that you end up having for that right yeah so we i i you use gis to kind of as a preemptive recon to see where the wetlands may be and then we can use them to kind of determine or we could potentially do heat maps. We haven't done it before, but um, I, I am a proficient in GIS and I kind of use those to uh, map out areas of interest. But th that's something I could definitely take into consideration as making a heat map of my catches. Yeah, I, I would think that would help like over a longer term looking at like progressions of, uh, you know, the disease and things like that, you know, to look For at, sure. you know, you know, annual patterns and things. I know we have a right. number of like vernal pools here in town too, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something I'm definitely going to consider. I mean, that's why we're really happy to get the ball rolling because, you know, Pioneer Valley is the only area in Massachusetts that hasn't had a district. So there isn't a lot of data to look at in the past. So we can start to kind of put those patterns together and really uh, have those, uh, have those kind of maps and uh, charts to show, you know, those patterns that we can look out for going forward. Okay, thanks. The report that you send at the end of the year, does that identify the locations that you used or is it just kind of a generic report? It, uh, it does, I, I send uh, the report to the local boards of health at the end of the season and uh, it lists, the uh the species we caught how many we caught uh where it was caught i don't, I don't tend to give like the exact address but it, it's pretty much you know the exact location um and yeah i recommend to the local boards of health not to share them the the actual trap site locations just because then people could find them and uh you tamper with traps but uh it, the information will be there for the local boards of health and select board for sure Jeff, do you have any questions? Um, I, I guess my only question would be, Chris, you, you represent a, a number of communities in the Pioneer Valley. Have you, mm -hmm. have you heard from them whether or not they're, do they typically opt out of the state program? Do they opt out of just the state aerial spraying, but not other, like how, how are other communities that are members of the district approaching the, the state opt out? So I, this is actually the first time they're doing the opt out like this. So it is a little unprecedented, but from what I'm seeing is a lot of, a lot of towns, uh, members and non-members alike, I've been hearing from both, um, especially in Franklin County are certainly interested in opting out the I, I've been providing guidance. I've been kind of maintaining a neutral stance saying, you know, I, I respect what, you know, works for your town. So I just provide the best information I can. And what I've been saying about it is uh, the, the opt out I get if uh, your town does not want aerial spraying. And, and but the the recommendation I've been kind of making is or something to consider, at least, is with the aerial spray. Um, it at least doesn't cost the town if there is a dire triple E situation, whereas an alternate plan might be more costly to a town. On top of that, the aerial spray is uh, is always 
unlikely, but not impossible. So that's, that's kind of the point I, I bring up when a town is considering opting out. But uh, any information beyond that, I mean, I'm happy to provide, but I, I've seen mixed interest to answer your question. I mean, there's plenty of towns that, you know, they ask me a couple of questions and they think, you know, I think we're going to stay with it. And then there's towns that their, uh, their residents are pretty adamant about not wanting an aerial spray. So, you know, they're sending in the application. Thank you. For sure. Anyway. See, for, for me, I, 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 I don't, I, the, the aerial spraying to me mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense because mm -hmm. you're, it, it's, it's, it's throwing too large of a blanket on, you know, right. And, and, and as you said, I mean, we have areas that do not have mosquitoes and we have areas that do have mosquitoes. And mm -hmm. personally, the one thing that, that I was, that inter if, if we decide to opt out and that's, mm -hmm. that's personally, that's where I would lean. Cause I, I, the, the aerial spraying, but okay. I would, I would look at looking at the, the Pioneer Valley mosquito control district because we have information. So if we do end up with a, a concern, we know where to address that concern. And, right, and, right. and, and then, then you can use backpack and or truck mounts. And, and I think mm -hmm. you, can, you can target those specific areas and you can take the necessary precautions that, um, and you can, and again, you can, you know, and, and again, like you said, if you have triple E in the end of the fall time and it's cold, cooler in the evening, well, an area of spraying is probably not going to be an effective choice of things to do at late in the evening in a cool because all the mosquitoes are not on the surface. They're, they're burrowed under their leaves and stuff. So um, mm -hmm. I, I just, but, but if you have the data and again, I think it's important to have data and that, and, and I, right. I think that's the greatest thing that the PV, PVMCD offers us is that be able to have that data. Right. Yeah, we definitely we try to use surveillance as the backbone of our program because then we can take a targeted approach and we, we take an emphasis on preventative measures rather than being, you know, too chemical dependent. Um, and uh, yeah, as for the opt out, I mean, uh, yeah, if that's what works for your town, opting out is definitely uh, a choice that works. And uh, I can confirm that the, the state has been a bit vague on what exactly they want to see in an application. The only uh, the only thing they've said for sure about the application is that it at least needs to have an education and public outreach component. But beyond that, you know, if you were to join uh, the Pioneer Valley District, you're always welcome to obviously mention that you're you use our surveillance, you're part of our program as part of your application. But uh, that's just something I've been uh, trying to make clear because some of our members thought being a member just automatically opted you out. But that's, so that's why I've been kind of you know, going around just making sure everybody, there isn't any misunderstanding. Okay. Do you have literature that you provide the towns and stuff that they can pass on to the public if people have questions about how the testing yeah, for is sure. done? In yeah, I've, uh, I've made uh, literature like that. I'm always happy to send it along uh, as members request it. Perfect. Okay. Um, anybody in the public? Susan? You're muted, Susan. Um, the $5,000 uh, would be uh, for more or less a 20-week surveillance program where you would come twice uh, each week, and then we would get a report at the end. Is that how it works? That's correct. And... Um, so we would use that data or the fact that we're working with you as part of our application for an opt-out. What else would we need on that application? I heard you say it's kind of vague, but is there anything else? That right. That, that is the only guidance that's offered on kind of the, uh, the guide for the application is that the minimum component is an education and outreach component. Beyond that, they, they didn't offer any additional guidance, but uh, your, the application would be more robust if you were using surveillance and were part of the district. But uh, to say exactly what they're gonna wanna see, 
uh, it's hard for me to say because they've given us the same guidance. Thank so you. I am interested to see what, uh, how the uh, EEA responds when they start responding to these applications because I, I don't think they're going to be too strict with towns in Western Mass, especially because Tripoli is less apt to pop up than it is in like southeastern Massachusetts. Okay. So is this a decision the select board has to make about what we're doing now? Is that what's next? Yep. Thank you. Well, let me, yes, yes and yes, yes and no. Uh, yes, we have to make a decision about opting out. That's the board has to make that decision. But the joining of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District is a town meeting article. That we that we that would that we would need to uh, um, vote at town meeting to do to join and plus the five thousand dollars. Correct. That's a warrant article. That's that's how I believe that, and it's 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 a it re, it's a renewable every year as well. So it's something that it, it it's you know just joining. It's not like the cog. You know, you you can you after after. After we join, if, if we don't believe that we're getting the services or we, we see something different, we can, you just go to town meeting and at the next town meeting you, uh, and you vote to, to, to not continue. That's correct. And it was kind of, it was kind of funny that there's a good point though, uh, because typically mosquitoes have been always a purview of a board of health, but the opt out of aerial spraying all of a sudden get, um, pass along to uh, uh, select boards and town managers and to city mayors and city councils. So I, I was, I, that was interesting how that played out, I thought as well. It's kind of like being a teacher. Every year you get new responsibilities, but you don't get any more money for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, sort of. Uh, I, 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 the, the one difference is that the teachers, if, if we don't have teachers, we don't have we don't have educated kids, um, and I mean they, they they their basic function is um, teaching, I guess. But you're right, there th that changes. But Board of Health have always been dealing with mosquitoes and diseases that are caused by mosquitoes, and the Board of Selectmen really that had not or select boards all over the state or mayors that really hasn't been our our area, so. Um, Kara, go, if uh, Kara, it looks like that you have a couple of questions. Would you like to uh, ask them now? Be fine. Hi, my name's Kara Gorey. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, hold on. I need to deliver food to the toddlers and then I will be right back. But I have a couple questions. I'm okay. sorry I joined late. I had some technical issues. And the first one, um, I wanted to say thank you all uh, for doing the job that you're doing. It's not easy and uh, it's enough said. Um, also, my name's Kara and I could put Kara Gorey next time. And it's really helpful to see Jeff, who I've met in the town office. Hi, Jeff. And Tom Fidekevitz also, I met him personally. And hi, I Jeff. just, um, Susan, hi. I love what you said about teachers. And select board one and select board two i don't know who you are so i'm just wondering if we can put first names nicknames um i just ran for school committee um i did not get one of the seats and that's fine but i definitely put myself out there it was the first time that i realized that massachusetts requires home addresses to be on the ballot which i felt a little um uh i didn't know about it let's put it that way and then boom my name is on a ballot with my address so um, I have a couple questions. One regarding state. Somebody said um, kind of frustration with the state. And let me tell you, I feel your frustration. So I'm wondering when we talk about vagueness from the state, that's not okay with me as a resident of Sunderland. So how are we as a town addressing the vagueness? Um. David, you want, you want to talk that? Well, I, I guess the question would be like specifically which which vagueness, like 
Uh, the one that was just said by the president that was speaking about the aerial spraying. And I also have um, experience with aerial spraying. My parents, my sorry, my Bachi and my Jaju grew up. Um, my Jaju was born and raised on River Road in South Deerfield. You can actually see it from Sunderland Bridge. And he, um, they lived across from, it's an old homestead right there on River Road. And there was aerial spraying when I was a child. Uh, I was in my grandparents' pool and I remember tasting the bitterness on my lips. So I am not in support. I'm total in support of what Tom said about taking it situation by situation and doing more localized um, protection. And that's why I said vagueness from the state. The, the gentleman that was speaking to that mentioned vagueness about it, rules, regulations, sections, I think was, chapters. I think he was referring to the part of the application, wasn't he, Jeff, I think? It, it, he was. Yeah. Well, con confusion in state is something I'm very familiar with. So I guess what I'm asking is, how are we as a town in general, how are we supporting each other when we come to state issues? Because we are a municipality, we are a local government, and we are in a state government. We are, we are speaking on behalf of all residents in Sunderland. So I'm wondering what we're doing to help with the vagueness of state regulations. Well, it, and, and on, on, this, on this particular one, I, I would think that one of the advantages of belonging to the Mosquito Control District is there's 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 a voice that that the, the district would have talking to the state and believe it or not when when you're a town of uh, 3500 like Sunderland 38 3800 um, you don't necessarily have a, the same clout as a mayor of Greenfield um, and because you're a mayor they sit in totally different meetings than the uh, boards of uh, the select boards do and in this I would and, and, there's, and there's one voice, but when you look at select boards, look, Sunderland has three, Deerfield has three, Conway has three. There's a lot of select board members. So mayors speak with a, um, a, different, a different voice. And the same thing with mosquito control. When you look at the mosquito control districts in the state, there's probably, Chris, what would you say? 12, 13, 14, something like that, mosquito control districts in the state? Yeah. There's there's about 12 and sorry, my phone just dropped for a second. So I missed yeah. a couple of minutes of that. Yeah, and, and that's fine. So, so the, I would say that the mosquito control district, that, that, was, that would be one thing that they would be conveying to the, to the state and the, and, the, and the state organizations that deal with it and say, hey, look it, you have to give these towns more information. You, you, gotta, you gotta tell them, you gotta be more specific. And, and, and typically that's when we have vagueness out there, we, we will talk to our legislators. We will talk to Natalie Blay. We'll talk to Joe Comerford. And we talk to them um, to relay that information. And then they hopefully, and well, they, they do. They'll, they'll talk to the people at the state and, and try to eliminate that vagueness. I, I hope that that makes sense. It does, thank you. And I was just wondering if we could follow up with in regards to on a public meeting as such, um, what are we required as far as pronouns and names to in order to be fair on all residents and people included in the meeting? Um, well, that's a good question. We, we never, we never addressed it. Um, I just, I put uh, myself on, I put myself on the line, I feel like. And so yep. I put myself, I would put Gory next time, the K-A-R-A, -A, Gory, G-O-R-E-Y. I live at eight Hemlock Drive. It was yep. already posted on the website. So yep. like, let's be transparent. I wanna know who you are. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and, and <laughs> one of the things when you're in a, a, a when, um, Crystal's learning it now, um, cause Crystal's, a, and she just fixed her, fixed her I thing. I did, I took that. Hey, Crystal, oh, it's been wonderful to meet you and congratulations. And thank you for your service in advance. And, and it's funny, but Chris, Crystal will find out, and, and her dad and mom have been were, have always been involved with the town. Matter of fact, Crystal's dad stopped in my yard more than one time. Perfect. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, when, when one of the things when you uh, an elected position mm -hmm. uh, in the state of Massachusetts, um, 
there there is no secrets and and like if 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 let's say you were to join the the board and there was something that it came to the office it was dressed to to Kara Gory or Crystal Drake or to David or Tom um and and everybody in the everybody it's it's basically a public document and everybody gets to read it so um, I'm finding it I'm finding that out thank you Tom I'm finding yeah, it out I, I trust me it, it was it was an eye opener because you get a, a thing uh, that was addressed to Tom and and everything the first time I remember it happened and and, and it goes into the select, select board reading and everybody reads that letter so yeah um, no thank you it, it's different care trust me it's a little different we get used to it okay um so i guess right now then then we're, we're going to discuss uh, uh chris if it's okay with you we're going to discuss later on this evening about the uh uh the the mosquito uh and opting in and opting out um but i don't okay, want to yeah. take any more of your time sure yeah uh it's totally fine uh feel free to shoot me an email this goes to anyone if anyone has any questions my email is uh christopher.craig at mass.gov and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any more questions. Yeah, Chris, thank you very much. Hope, or I, I hope that we talk to you again very soon. For sure. We'll talk to you soon, and uh, please take care. Thanks, Chris. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, David and Crystal, do you want to keep talking about mosquitoes to, to, to plot, a, plot a course forward? Uh, sure, if you want to resolve it now, yeah. All right. Oh, so, so, Jeff's got a question there, I think. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I was just going to suggest, I mean, it's a fairly, for opting out, um, you can certainly continue to have the discussion, but what, one of the things that the state was not vague about is the procedure to opt out. Um, so it does require a vote of the select board either to opt out of all spraying or just aerial spraying. They want to know that the Board of Health has been consulted. And so I just wanted to let you know that um, this past week, I did start putting together an opt-out application and did run it by the Board of Health chair. Um, they're also, who, who was okay with it. Um, but I, I didn't know, or I, we have one more week, I guess, one more meeting before the deadline. So I wasn't sure if you wanted to have the discussion so I can take that back and amend it. And then you can uh, take the official vote next week. But um, I have started preparing that application. And, and I was going to say something. Um, if if you want the board of health to be, if you want the board of health's opinion to make them responsible, I I, so I don't understand this by the state. The board, if if they're going to give the they give this authority to the, to the the select board, and yet oh by the way, make sure you talk to the board of health. That's that's backwards. Okay, that's backwards. But that's only my own my my own opinion. I, I just I just and again it they should should have, it should have stayed with it should have stayed with the board of health to begin with. But I I, I agree that. But we should get us we should get an idea, Jeff, because we need to know if we're going to put the uh, the mosquito control on the warrant. Or not. So so that's why I would like to discuss that. And David, do you Crystal have thoughts on that? Uh, I'm putting it on there, or yeah, I'll put it on the warrant, David. Yeah, I think we should. I do too. I mean, I think more data is never going to hurt us. No, exactly. I, I just, and, and again, this is my personal belief. You you don't you don't go in and and spray the entire town if you have a problem that was that's in the green swamp, you know. You, you 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 address you address that issue. You address the green swamp area, or if you go up to Chard Pond or or wherever the place is, but you don't spray the entire town. I just and and I believe we have to have the data. I I, I think we want to do it at least for one year and see what kind of information Chris and the board and the mosquito control board come back with, and and see if it's information that we can actually use. You know, now how often does the state test? I I think the state. That's a good question. I I I'm not sure. 
I, I think if you're if, if someone sends a state a mosquito, it'll test it. You know, right? Because you want to do a fair comparison to those guys and say, you know, how how often does the state do it? Where versus the mosquito right. control thing? Right. Yep. Right. I mean, and you know, the state had to have tested last year. Where's that data? Do we know? No. Nope. You know where they tested, where they pulled this from. Right, not having access to that is You're kind of in the dark. I could tell you I tested mosquitoes too, but if I don't have <laughs> to prove it, what right. good is it? And, and I guess that that's that's the whole point. I, I just and again, I'd rather see I'd rather see the data and and do it for a year and see what happens. You know? Yeah, I, I'm and with you on the data side, Tom. Definitely. Um, all right, so so Jeff, can you? Uh, can you uh, work up that Warren article and put that on the article? And we'll, and if it's okay, we can take a vote next week on this for opting out or not. Okay. Yep. yep. You opt out for being having spraying. Are you also opting out from the state testing? No, but I, I think I, I don't believe so. I see, I, I don't think they, they kind of have. They, they're, they're looking at a, they're looking at a big picture. They're not looking at a community. You know. So I think they're looking at a bigger, big, much bigger, much bigger, Jeff. Yeah, and uh, to, to that question, are, are you talking about, because my understanding is that you can opt out of all state activity, mosquito activity, or just state aerial spraying, which may, which in my mind, if we're joining the, the mosquito control district and we can say, here, we know what the mosquito habitats are. We, we opted out of aerial spraying. Maybe the state will still come in and do backpack or truck spraying. Yeah. Right. Um, I, assume, I just want to make sure, is that the direction you're, you're thinking? That, that's actually, that, that's perfect because, be, yep. because if, if you, if, and I think David or Crystal asked a question before, and that, but that's specifically what I'm thinking about, Jeff, is that the, the state would come in to do the aerial spraying and say, look, we don't need the aerial spraying. We need you to go to this specific location and do the backpack spraying or the truck spraying, and and that's where we we need it to be done. And and I think and and I think having that information is critical. To and 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 I, and if you want to do if you want to do a good job, you have to base this on 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 good information. That's okay. what I mean. Tom, I think Susan has a question. Susan, go ahead. Or a comment. I You're muted at... again. Somebody said they should have a copyright on uh, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, uh, do we have um, a wetlands mapping of the town so that he yeah. knows where he's going to be going, and that's where he'll go when they when, when they do the surveillance. Yeah, we've got a lot, we've mapped out our vernal pools, and there's a number of other uh, other pieces of information that he can use. So, and I'm sure he's got his own data as well. Yeah, we got a lot. We got we got all, all kinds of nice good maps, uh, yep. Susan, on all of that stuff. There is there is some swamp area that's not vernal pools. Oh yeah, that is no, correct. Have, yeah. We have, well, the vernal pools are important because those can be very easily missed. Oh yeah, no, no, no right. doubt about that. Just saying. They're, they're seasonal, so, you know, they're not always gonna be there. So you've got to look at all the different, you know, like actual standing ones and, you know, right. very slow body. But there, that exists in maps slower. right now? You have maps of that? Uh, yeah. Not not in the room I'm in, but that we do have them. And, okay. and uh, the nice thing that I liked is that he said he works with GIS, so we can add that information into our GIS layers as time goes on, too. So, what is GIS? It's the uh, geographical, was it information survey? Is that right? Spatial yep. information, yeah. So, that's basically what we use to do a lot of mapping. Um, it really, you can put a lot of different information on there, but everything to, from our sewer line, you know, pipes to uh, all sorts of stuff. So, so, so Susan, if you went, if you went to the Town of Sunderland webpage right now and looked at the, uh, um, you, you'd probably, those maps that we're talking about, 
you can probably find them either on the Conservation yep. Commission and or the Planning Commission or the Assessor's Office. They, they'll have all, but all those maps are all GIS maps. Okay. And, and, and e even the uh, uh, plots are all, the plots are all on GIS information. Yep. Yeah, and I can help you, Susan, if, if you have any trouble. They, uh, the wetlands are all mapped online too, so I can help you get there if you want to give me a call. Yeah, I'd be interested to see that. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, anybody else? All right, so uh, Jeff, if you could put that on, we, we can vote next week. Okay. All right. Um, appointment, next on the new business, appointment of uh, Connor Wakus as a seasonal hybrid highway favor. Yep. Uh, oh, oh, no, it's right. Go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna say, you know, every summer highway hires a couple of young folks to help with painting and um, doing some cleanup and stuff. And um, this is the young man that that the highway department is recommending for this summer. Motion. Motion to appoint. Chris, she did second. I heard her. Yeah, I heard her. Okay. Yeah. We have a motion made and second to appoint Connor as our seasonal highway uh, laborer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Declare that 3-0, Jeff. Next up is a select board and committee appointments. After, after grueling negotiation between the, the town administrator and various more members of the board, Jeff has a complete list of all the uh, committee assignments that have been uh, chosen by the board members. So Jeff will be pub publishing that, okay? Do you, do you wanna vote on the slate? Do you want me to talk it through or? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so the appointments for the chair, um, alternate on the 120 North Main Street, South County EMS Board of Oversight, uh, Community Preservation Committee, South County Senior Center, and um, everybody's gonna be on the Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team. Um, Mr. Pierce, uh, Economic Development Committee, Emergency Preparedness Team, Union 38 and IA Rep, Ditch Committee, and Capital Improvement Committee and Ms. Drake Tremblay, Housing Committee, um, 120 North Main Street Village Center Committee, Personnel Committee, and Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team. Motion. A motion for the appointments as noted. <laughs> we have a second by Crystal. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero, Jeff. Okay, um, warrant and budget discussion. Jeff? Yeah, so um, the Capital Planning Committee met on Thursday and have made their recommendations um, for the capital budget. Uh, and I will just pull it up on screen since I have it. Um, it is continuing uh, the fifth year of the truck lease for the highway department at $27,206.48. Um, HVAC repairs at the library, $7,800. Uh, that's slightly below in the past years, they got a, a new vendor. Um, I'm gonna skip the, radio replacement, because that's a little bit of a longer explanation. Um, kitchen steamer for the Sunderland Elementary School, $24,707. That the current steamer is completely um, inoperable at the moment. Uh, and this would, this specific steamer would um, be compatible with the existing um, boiler that they have. Uh, continuing the rim brand, excuse me, rim band replacement um, around the exterior of the school. 
that and then also from the capital stabilization fund fifty three thousand sixty six dollars and thirty four cents which is what remains in capital stabilization for the townwide radio replacement um, and the request for that was seventy five thousand um, and so we would likely need, and this ties into the warrant, um, we would likely need a, a warrant article to appropriate the remainder, remaining 22,000, um, tw or just under 22,000 out of some source, either free cash or um, uh, the um, reserve, stabiliz sorry, stabilization. stabilization. Um, and then there were two, two other capital uh, recommendations for the wastewater treatment plant. Those would not come out of the capital stabilization fund, but the sewer reserve fund to replace a clarifier gearbox and uh, the mail end of a pipe. Hey, hey Jeff, did, did, we, did we ever talk to um, the operators about are they still are they still happy with the mechanical aeration at the plant? Because a lot of people no longer use mechanical aeration; they'll they'll use diffused air. Uh, um, I I have not talked to them about that. Yeah, see see what they long see it long term. You know, see it's long term. I I and and I understand why they probably want to replace it because those those are original equipments back that goes back to seventy five. So. Gear, gear boxes we, we rebuilt them probably 10 10 12 years ago 15 years ago so they they've been in they, they they've definitely we've gotten our money's worth out of those but i just wonder if long term if they want to stay with mechanical aeration or if they want to swap over to uh diffused air at some point okay um so the the Total available in capital stabilization is $122,279.82. That's what's being recommended. Um, and uh, 11935000 from sewer reserve for a total of $134,214.82. Um, and then that relates to the warrant review, which I, I drafted a, a warrant article um, for the remaining Again, we're twenty-one thousand and change for the radios. So, so Jeff, what what was what what was on the want list but wasn't funded? Um, there was, let's see, there was a uh, oil spill containment for the elementary school, um, which I think the feedback from the capital planning committee was there. There was. They wanted to understand better um, what the risks were and what what the the challenges um, and and wanted to actually see what shape the oil tank was in before spending money on a spill containment if the tank isn't in necessarily good repair. Um, there was a request for uh, additional funding to install a generator. Uh, at the public safety complex. The public safety complex has a generator. There's an issue with um, its ability to, to power the public safety complex. So there was a project several years ago, you might remember yep. better than I would. Um, and there were enough funds to purchase the generator but not install it yet. So um, this was to cover the installation costs there was also a request for a 12 inch milling head to help with uh, pothole repairs from the highway department. Um, hey, 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 Jeff. Yes. Um, can, can, on, on that, on that, on that uh, generator installation at the PSC mm -hmm. public safety complex. Um, can we remember that when, when we're looking at if we do receive money from the uh, federal government? Yep, absolutely. Because that that would be you know that that would be I would think we would be able to run the as a uh, emergency heating and or emergency uh, cooling shelter also. Yep. Um, 
And then there was a, a crew a request to replace the oldest uh, police cruiser in the fleet. Okay. Um, I'll also note that, that Frontier um, did have a capital request to do duct cleaning in the gymnasium and auditorium and replace the curtain in the auditorium. Um, but due to savings from the track project and use of efficiency, I always, I never get E and D right. Efficiency and- Excess and deficiency. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I combine I <laughs> efficiency. Excess and deficiency funds, uh, they were able to cover the cost and withdrew the, the request. Um, so, was that, so that's why they're asking now to use the E and D money. Right. Okay. All right, good. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. So that is that that is uh are we gonna look at putting those on the warrant? Are you gonna do we have we have a uh, capital say we have a capital uh, warrant article, right? Yes. Have, have yep. you written that have you written that up yet? Yes. So yep. right. So you, so want to, um, David Crystal, you want to have a discussion about that? Yeah, if we if we think we can uh, get it on there, let's definitely do that. Okay. Do you have the uh, Do you have your uh, proposed warrant article, Jeff? Um, yes. Because I don't think we had the final numbers when we were going through this the warrant articles the last time. So we right. we did not. Yeah. And this um. This is whether or not to recommend, right? Um, I, I think it did we did we vote to put it on last time? You did. Yes, would be to recommend, yes. Okay. Um so just okay. Um yep, so that's current the article five. Um So my understanding is that this is typically what's on the warrant and then in the actual motion, um, we would drop in the, the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion to recommend that if we're ready. Okay, Crystal. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, recommend article five, which is our president, uh, presently listed as article five, which is the capital budget. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Got to get his lights back on. No, uh, while, while we're on the warrant and on this page, this is the article related to the emergency radio system that I drafted. It's a new article that wasn't on last week. Yep. Do you, don't know if you wanted to take any action related to that one or the elm tree this time. Uh, personally, I, th I don't think we have a choice on the radios. Right, we gotta do that. Right? Yeah, I mean, we may as well do that one because we gotta okay. get that done. I, I guess the only, Thing is, the, the finance committee is meeting Wednesday night, and I didn't know if the select board had a, a recommendation as to the funding source, or if they wanted to wait for the finance committee to talk about it and have a recommendation. I would say I got to go get a plug for my computer. We could um, we could vote to include at least for now, and then hold off on the recommendation until after the finance committee meets. That might be good. Thomas and Rusty running low on battery. Almost ready to shake. Did you get your low battery warning? Yeah. Yep.
while he's plugging in you may you you could make a motion to include and second it that's well that's right yeah i'll make a instead of dead air i know you, sh you should be on in a second did he did he actually i can't see the whole list of participants did he actually drop off because of yeah it looks like he might have yeah yeah he really ran out of power <laughs> I'll make a motion to um, include. I'll second it. Okay. And we can update him when he gets back on. That's true. <clears throat> Broadcast abhors dead hair. So, all right, Jeff. And 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 we can continue this conversation uh, when he gets back on. But thoughts as to the source of the funds. Um, there you know, hmm. I'm a little a little hesitant for free cash, but I mean, what, it's what twenty four thousand or so. Twenty, yeah, twenty one. Um, and I, I think what I had. What I had done in the most recent version, I think, was anticipated using free cash to cash that that capital committee would fund the full seventy five thousand and some of that in in the Article Five that you just recommended would be funded through from free cash. Free cash, not just stabilization. So, well, while you were plugging in, Tom, I made a motion to include. Was it seconded? Then, yep, Crystal seconded it. So okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, and you want to hold off making a recommendation until next week after the finance committee has a chance to look at it. Yeah, because I'd be curious to see what, what how they feel about free cash versus capital stabilization. Okay, all those in favor of including, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero to include. And Jeff, you, you said your next one was on, that was emergency radio. You said your next one was on the uh, on the elm tree. Yep, I think that it. We talked about it a little last week, and uh, that it was included as a warrant article. It's also included in the operating budget for the uh, tree warden. So there was no action taken last week on this article so i didn't know if you wanted to um vote to remove it from the warrant or or how much how much how much is in the uh warrant account currently yeah like for, for this fiscal year or how much are we budgeting for how much we got how much we have in for for next year next fiscal year um i Believe that it is twenty seven thousand. So, okay. so you're saying you're twenty, and and you want to use twenty, and and if we don't have the Warren article, it's only going to be twenty thousand dollars for the. Uh, so it, it'll be only seven thousand dollars for the tree warden for the year. Uh, yeah, I believe it. It was originally eight thousand one hundred, and with with the expense for the elm tree, it would be twenty. That twenty-eight thousand one hundred. So you, so you, so you put you put money into the account to cover this. Correct. And we have in our and and that that was the last numbers that we looked at were our, with our uh, budget. Budget. Right. I then I don't see any reason to carry this Warren article. Right. I would agree. Because we'll just account for it in the tree warden, but and it, it kind of makes sense to have it there anyway. Really. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Jeff, I don't. Crystal, you. What do you think? You want to. You want to. I'm gonna have to learn how to read lips. Yeah. No. She. Yeah. She said. I know. For some reason, it's the the, the audio is not getting picked up. You know, yeah. She's not on mute though. No. It, it's it's not coming through, Crystal. I I can hear you. Right. Off to my side. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I just heard, I just heard you through David's microphone. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I would, if, if Crystal, unless you have a reason, for, I, I would just not, I would not even put this on. Yeah. Okay. Jeff. Can do it. Okay. Now, let's yep. don't put it on, Jeff. Okay. 
Okay. I, Jeff, do we have any other warrant articles that we needed to, uh, we had any that we could vote on tonight or whatever? Do we need to vote to pull that one off? Did we already vote to include it or did we just discuss it last? Okay. No, we're, no. Only discussion. Do we have to talk about, do we have to talk about adding the, uh, the mosquito one to the warrant or can we wait uh, till next week? I, I think I was actually just looking at the minutes from last week and I think that it was already on and it was included. Okay, good. Okay, good. So right. and we'll, 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 we'll discuss next week if we want to recommend it or not. Okay. Anything else on the warrant, Jeff? Um, I don't, I don't think so. Um, yeah, no. Unless you want to start making recommendations on the CPA articles or I, again, I anticipate finance committee is going to be taking, making their recommendations this week. Yeah. Um, so if you That's want to do it next. So, so, so Jeff, can we, can you, uh, can you just uh, print out the, the, uh, the warrant for next week for each of us so that yep. we can go through the warrant and we'll, we'll clean up the warrant so we'll be all set for town meeting. Okay. Yep. We'll, we'll be a little early this year. Right, Davey? Hey, that's all right. Be nice to wrap that up and get ready. Yeah. Um, Jeff, did um, anything else on the budget and or the uh, warrant review? No, we're the the last thing that has nothing to do with the operating or capital budgets is just we need to get clarification on the CPA revenues um, for that one administrative article um, and get that finalized. Yeah, talk. I, I mean, I'll, I've said it a hundred times before, but if it wasn't for Jennifer, um, her and her, she spends a lot of time working those numbers. So if anybody has an idea, it's Jennifer. Yeah, I'm true. And I, I think that for this, we need help from the accountant. And uh, this is his first time doing CPA. So he's just figuring it out but that um we should have that for next week yeah okay all right and yeah like i said if you could if you could just uh print out a warrant for each of us next week and that way we can uh we can go through it and we can uh, finish off our recommendations and stuff okay yep absolutely okay select board updates david i'm good this week crystal Yep. <laughs> David, what'd she say? She said she's good this week. Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, select board updates. Um, a couple things. One, one is for the senior center. Um, we noticed that a tent went up over at the senior center, that the tent was purchased by the town of Whiteley um, with COVID money. And I believe, um, I may be wrong on that, but I know Whiteley did buy the tent. And I saw an email later this afternoon from the town of Deerfield. Um, Jeff, may, you may have more information from the Deerfield town administrator that their fire chief and building inspector says it's not properly fire rated, so it has to come down. Did you oh. see that, Jeff? I did see that. And um, there, there was a, a follow up where the Waitley town administrator reached out to the vendor and said, what testing is, is this compliant can can we prove that it is and so we're we're researching whether or not that is true or not yeah because i would find it kind of hard to believe that they would sell a tent to the town that wasn't so may, maybe they're looking for a special sticker um i did well i just know when we did the elementary school there was when you go walk outside the gym going into the cafeteria. If you look on the east wall up behind some wood, you'll see some black curtains up there. Um, that, that, those curtains almost kept us from being not opening, being able to open up because the building inspector didn't know if they were fire retardant. So we actually, if someone went up there and looked, there's actually a piece of the material cut out that was sent out to her tested and it was found out to be it was uh, fire fire retardant coated. So 
and they tried to light it on fire and it wouldn't light. But so I, I know, but that that was 20 years ago. Um, so I would think anybody selling anything today, it, you would make sure that you had the proper stuff on there. So anyways, um, so so if anybody's on the um, um, senior senior center, notice the tent up, and I noticed they they paste it, they posted on the Facebook that the tent was up, and they were hopeful hopefully going to open soon. Um, I I would pump the brakes on that because that may not be happening depending on what the building inspector and the fire chief says in Deerfield, if it meets the, the necessary requirements. So we're going to learn more about that. The second thing is I I would uh, I would like to um, also mention that um, South County EMS they've been going to the um, um, clinics to supply to supply the backup the medical backup the, the ambulance there um, and I would just like to say that I I was I I'm we're, we're very lucky to have the dedicated people that we have and um, the paramedics at EMT that works over there they do a they do an outstanding job and when you when you get to see those people do their job um, and it, maybe not being the person they're that they're taking care of, but you watch them do their work, you become even more impressed by watching what they do. Um, and I just I just think that it's amazing that the town of Sunville is able to offer that that program. So, um, Jeff, town administrator updates. Yeah. So. A uh, couple things, um, as uh, Laurie mentioned, uh, the governor made an announcement today and with limited exceptions, expects um, full reopening of, of the state on May 29th. Um, and that means going outside without masks uh, for, un for vaccinated people. Um, and then he also anticipates um, ending the state of emergency on June 15th. So uh, we're gonna start planning for if we can no longer hold meetings like this. Um, you know, actually are legally not obligated to meet in, per in person and how that would work. Um, I know that the MMA and, and other communities in the legislature are asking the status of that, can we continue to have remote meetings and things like that? But um, so I, I hope not. I, I, I mean, there's advantages to that, but I think I think we lose. I, I, I again, I think we would continue to I would continue to hold it on the Zoom meetings, but I or some way um, anything to get more people involved. But I think that we miss something by not allowing people to come come to a meeting. I, 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 you know, it's nice that we can come on uh, on Zoom, but I also think it'd be nice that people come to meeting also. I think, yeah, I, think I think it's a way we can do both. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, Susan. Um, in, in the schools, the teacher have to have, to, the teachers have to do both. They have to do in person and they have to do Zoom at the same time. So maybe there's a way to do both. Cause I agree with Tom, you lose something not being together, but you also gain something by somebody like me who might not be able to come to all the meetings, but get to hang out with you all. And again, Kara, I noticed Kara's on tonight and, and Kara sounded like earlier, she had some, some others that, that she was, you know, she said she was getting dinner for them. Um, yeah, and, and that's great that Kara is able to join the, and it's great that Kara can join the meeting without having to come down. Um, but I also think there's a, there's, there's interaction that, that we miss by not being together and, 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 and holding those conversations. So I agree. Right, what I'm you. saying is to do both. Absolutely. I agree. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks absolutely. a lot, everybody. And, uh, Thank you. It, and, and we are we're working on the technical aspects because un, unlike a classroom where there's one teacher, if you have three people, you can get feedback and and echo chambers right. and things like that. So we're working on how to set that up. But I guess my point was that it could be if they don't 
we might be forced to have in-person meetings and and even if we do add on zoom so um tom as, as you alluded to um in the COVID update there is a save the dates um for 12 year old and above uh students at frontier or even if you're not at frontier there's going to be a clinic um on may 21st and then uh another one June 1st from 2 to 7 p.m. And that's to help vaccinate some of those uh, that are now eligible for the Pfizer vaccine 12 and over. Um, and I believe that information is on the website already. If not, we'll get it up there as soon as possible. Um, and then I also wanted to talk a little bit about how annual town meeting, we're, how we're thinking about it for this year. Um, and we met, I met with the clerk and the moderator um, last week and the recreation coordinator and came to the consensus that we thought that last year worked really well. Um, and so we were thinking about basically running it the same as last year with a couple small exceptions um, rather than renting sandy cans allowing people to come into the building, um, limiting the number of people in the restroom to two so that there can be plenty of distance, but allowing people to use the restrooms in the building. Um, and then the other significant change would be not, we would define the floor of town meeting, um, but not segregate uh, smaller six foot by six foot or, or similar boxes for individuals. Um, and given that by the 29th, um, vaccinated people will not have to wear masks uh, and certainly not outdoors. Um, although we would encourage people to socially distance and if they're uncomfortable wear masks, um, but allow them to congregate as, as they see fit within the defined um, floor of town meeting. And that's gonna be June 12th? June 12th at 4 p.m., correct. And we're going to have it here at the town office building. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, could could I going? My only suggestion, if we're going to use the inside inside um, bathrooms, could we also um, talk to custodial the people that provide custodial services to make sure that we stay clean? Yep, we, we're actually, I just saw an email this evening um, asking, typically they come in Thursday nights or Friday to do the cleaning and yep. we're gonna ask if they could do that um, on Sunday, uh, Sunday the 13th or, or Saturday evening. Excellent, thank you. And, and if they can't, we will um, do a, a, a different cleaning. Okay. An additional, sorry. And um, the the town report is out now, Jeff. It is on the website. Yep. So, so the town report is on the website. You can also call, and if you want a written copy, you uh, you can call us, and Jeff will make make you up a, a written copy if they if that's something that you would want as well. But the the, the annual report is on the website, and it will be able to uh, to be accessed. And then the last thing that I want to, I guess, circle back to is um, the frontier. Uh, and this is probably an item under unanticipated. Um, for the frontier school committee uh, voted to amend their budget as we discussed about um, using E and D funds uh, for some of the capital projects and. I, I don't think the select board needs to take any action. My understanding is if you don't, it's sort of uh, automatically approved, but I didn't know if you wanted to discuss that this week or you want me to put it on the agenda next week or. Um, I'd like to put it on the agenda next week, but so, so that basically there can be, there can be a, um, uh, 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 an agenda item so that we notify the, uh, the residents and in the community that we are going to, be talking about that, Jeff, okay? Yep, absolutely. 
uh, and the, the, that's it for my update. I, well, and I guess, sorry, I'll do one more, which is um, if people notice that as they're driving along North Main Street that people are, you know, the contractors are parking equipment or anything, please let us know. We try and get out there at least once, if not several times a day, just to see what's going on and uh, make sure if they're in the tree belt that the arborist is there and they're doing the air excavation. But um, certainly there are times, um, especially on weekends, that staff may not be driving around or um, checking in. So please let us know if you see anything or have any questions. And if we know the answers, we'll, we'll certainly um, tell you about them. But uh, if there are concerns, we wanna know about those too, so. Yeah, just let people know we, had, we did have a concern the other day that they, they were parking their equipment under trees. Um, part of the specifications and specifically says they're not supposed to park under the drip line. So you notice now that the equipment is parked under the, in a, the cornfield. So, um, I mean, we're trying, um, but if you see something, Jeff is absolutely right. Again, if you see something or you're concerned, let us know and we can either let you know what's happening or we can find out what's happening. Okay. Thank you, Jeff, for bringing that up as a good point. All right, anything else? David, Crystal? We're gonna have to fix that microphone. It's got a thumbs up. All right, David, uh, motion? Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Um, we have a second for motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He wants to get home. Uh, all right, we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn our meeting this evening. We, our next meeting will be on uh, May 24th, Monday night, uh, starting at 6.30. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3-0 vote. Jeff, declare us out at uh, 8.07, please. Thank you very much.